from nowhere, uh, less than 10 billion, Zoom is now uh, worth 48.7 you know, billion. Point, 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 um, 48.7 billion, um, uh, and that's more valuable than Southwest, Delta, United, IAG, Lufthansa, and American Airlines put together. Uh, so, so yeah, that's the change that has happened, and we are obviously going to see responses from Cisco, uh, from Google. I think just today I saw them, you know, Google all over email throwing their new uh, virtual conferencing, you know, uh, solution which they have just launched, um, uh, which means uh, the, 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 the is change these activity that's going out there, right? Being in banking myself or financial services, we've been on a digital transformation path for quite a bit of time and uh, uh, working on a number of products prior to COVID, uh, as I mentioned earlier on. And uh, one of the things that we have been able to quickly accelerate and take to the market is, is, is a digital insurance product um, uh, that is doing very well in the market. Uh, he, he, through this particular product via the USSD platform, you are able to, uh, you know, to, to actually buy your insurance uh, a, as well as license your vehicle without leaving your home or office. Um, and uh, on the logistics end, which would be of interest to, to my colleague Jeff, uh, is then uh, the last mile, I've got a logistics provider that will be able to deliver, you know, your license disc and insurance uh, in the comfort of your, you know, of your home and office. So those are some of the things that are happening in terms of uh, mainstream banking. We've seen a, 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 a movement at scale uh, by customers to using digital uh, channels, internet banking, mobile banking, uh, those that had um, not onboarded those platforms or had registered but had not started using, they are coming through, unfortunately, and or fortunately during the COVID lockdown, they've had to use uh, our call centers to get activated. Um, uh, and uh, that has been really a boon for, for financial institutions, um, uh, you know, during this lockdown period. Um, I would want uh, to look at, um, uh, I think, a, a global view that uh, some of the analysts in the market and consultants have taken. This infographic was done by, uh, by Gartner. It uh, just resonates with what Farai was uh, talking uh, about earlier on. Uh, though from a different uh, consultancy, global consultancy firm, McKinsey. Gartner um, uh, speaks about the adapt and respond uh, phase of, of the, you know, of the pandemic, where we we're trying to protect our customers, protecting our, our, our staff and stakeholders at the onset of, uh, you know, of the crisis. And uh, uh, the lockdown was, was part of uh, some of those responses. Uh, triggering or activating business continuity procedures, um, you know, to ensure that uh, uh, customers could at least access some of the services that we provide uh, as, as, as businesses. The next phase is really a recover and build. Uh, and uh, post the recover and build, we're looking at businesses then trying to reset, restore, and adjust to the, to the new normal. This is uh, Gartner, uh, an IT advisory and consultancy the firm, um, uh, who have developed this, this particular model. Um, then, uh, in terms of uh, areas of interest, particularly to marketers, is uh, the phases and feelings that customers have been going through uh, during this particular period. Uh, there was a feeling of uncertainty uh, which then uh, was full of preparation, uh, adjustment, and organization to get used to uh, bathing and going nowhere or not putting on our fake up, uh, you know, the day. Uh, as well as then after that, it was endurance. Others started jogging, trying to get something to kill up the time. Um, uh, and, 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 and so forth. So, so those were some of the things that the phases and feelings that have been generated by this particular, uh, particular pandemic. And each of those phases, um, right through to anticipation of the new normal, 
which is what people are going through. Some are going to work, some are still to the office, others are still working from home. I think nothing has changed, but we are looking in a phase of anticipating uh, of what the new normal will look like is the uplifting of the of the lockdowns, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah, and, and personas have been emerged out of this crisis. Uh, others are called market observers. I pulled this from ADA, uh, it's an Asian firm, uh, which tried to characterize how responding. Uh, this market observer uh, that continue to trade, to look optimistically at what's happening and checking out the opportunities that are to emerge out of this. You've got the social citizen, very active, trying to contribute with ideas, uh, hopefully not fake news, uh, how to combat, uh, uh, you know, COVID, protect yourself, protect others, hashtagging, and, 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 and so forth. Uh, then the adaptive short shopper, um, the one that migrated straight away into e-commerce uh, to, to start doing their shopping, whether it was by, by phone ordering vegetables or fruits by phone uh, or something like that. Uh, there is the board type, um, the health nut, sad and confused, uh, warm fitness freak, um, those that decided to bring their gym back home, um, and the brave one that, that, that looked for PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, and uh, uh, took a risk to go out there and see what's happening. And all these uh, personas would call for a different type of messaging, depending on the type of customers that you have. Uh, and the same principles that apply in terms of designing customer journeys, identifying your personas, and uh, curating your communication and content to target those uh, uh, different, uh, different people would, would apply. I spoke earlier on about, you know, uh, digital transformation uh, and uh, digital business strategy uh, comes, uh, Gartner, you know, categorizes it into two. Uh, and uh, like I mentioned earlier on, businesses will be looking at two different uh, new models, you know, to emerge out of, uh, uh, you know, out of, uh, out of COVID um, to ensure that they succeed, they survive and they grow. Um, uh, at the elementary level, you are looking at uh, digital business optimization. You, you, you're trying just to improve on what you already have. Start where you are, improve what you have in terms of uh, productivity and existing revenue, as well as better customer experiences. Leveraging the digital assets that you have, the technology that you already have. People have got mobile phones. What is it that you can do via mobile phones? You've got email. You've got websites uh, and so forth. What can you do to lower the cost to serve using, you know, those particular uh, assets that you already have? You've got call centers. How can call centers substitute, um, you know, uh, the, the brick and mortar uh, branches or outlets that you have that you have been using to run to run your business? Then on the far right, uh, you, on the right there, you, you've got digital business transformation. Here we're talking about a complete model transformation. If you were completely brick and mortar, you are now talking brick and mortar, you are now talking e-commerce, you are now talking digital. You are straddling the two models where you, you've got your current brick and mortar, but for you to survive post-COVID, you need to bring in a digital layer uh, that will en en enable you to drive what we call net new revenue. You're bringing in new products. Uh, if you were using your infrastructure just to save your own business, you, you, you look, try to look at how you can pull your infrastructure, how you can white label and enable others to leverage or use, use your platforms going forward. So you've got new models. You've got uh, net new revenues that you never used to have prior to then uh, coming down to uh, what brands can do, uh, you know, uh, on the back of, of this COVID pandemic, it's important that you, you spread positivity, compassion, and kindness during this time. Uh, I think Farai spoke about this. Uh, you, you also want to leverage uh, digital to empathize, communicate, and deliver products and service. The bringing in of e-commerce as a model, uh, it's, it's a game changer. Uh, the customer experience can really change. We're talking engagement. We're not talking down to customers or, 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 or you know, uh, 
um, one-way type of communication. It's got to be, uh, you know, bilateral. It's got to be sincere uh, in terms of listening to the customer and really responding to what they are talking about. Uh, and help people pass time and be hopeful. Um, uh, activate the brand purpose. Uh, you know, talking about uh, activating the brand purpose, many brands have been at sea. They've struggled to find their identity in the advent of, of uh, you know, of COVID. Uh, what is your CSR program? What does it say? Uh, are you increasing prices because costs are rising? Uh, do you have a genuine purpose that can connect with your customers? Uh, you know, are you human centric? Uh, are you, uh, you know, uh, design driven? Are you insights driven? All those things will come out at, at times like this. Like there's a quotation I love from, you know, Michelle Obama. Uh, she said, um, um, uh, uh, being uh, a president of the United States, uh, talking about a husband, uh, does not change who you are. It reveals who you are. And equally for brands, to me, it applies. Uh, a crisis does not change who you are. It reveals who you are. It reveals the ethos, the essence of your brand. So I think to marketers out there, the conversation should be, uh, have you discovered exactly what your brand represents? Did you live up to, you know, to, uh, to your reputation or to, to what you flaunt on your vision and mission and, 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 and uh, you know, pay your flights. What are you not to do during a crisis like this one? Uh, I think uh, um, Farai did uh, talk about this. You, you, you cannot cut your marketing budget. You need to maintain your share of voice. Uh, you need to maintain that engagement. Uh, price discounts are unlikely to cut it. Promotions are less effective. People are very illiquid. People are cash dry. They are asset rich, but very cash dry. Uh, and those assets are illiquid. You can't sell, you know, your, your, your house uh, in this kind of market to buy a ventilator. It will not have, the sale will not go through. Nobody will release the money. Avoid being seen as opportunistic. Uh, the brand ethos will emerge during, during a time like this. In terms of our takeaways, uh, be authentic and faithful. Find the right story around which to engage, you know, with the market, with the community. Strike the right tone. Don't talk about, uh, uh, you know, corona promotion or corona discounts, stuff like that. It, it doesn't sit well with, with, with the market. Digital marketing skills are key. That's why MAZ, I think over the last couple of years, we, we, we you know, uh, it has been driving digital marketing. Uh, you know, diploma, and uh, for those corporates that have not embraced it as a key skill, um, uh, I hazard to say you need to ensure that in your marketing arsenal you've got people that are competent uh, in terms of delivery of, um, you know, digital marketing, you know, or strategy and execution. Um, digital transformation is unavoidable if you are to change the business model, whether you, you're optimizing or doing an overall in terms of the model. Um, uh, definitely for me, leveraging technology is key. Building ecosystems, uh, design thinking, outside in thinking uh, is really gonna be key. Fail fast, fail forward are some of the principles that, that apply in digital. It's okay to fail, learn, dust yourself up and improve, come up with a better product, better service, better processes. Um, uh, prior to COVID, we were saying the future is already here, uh, except it's unevenly distributed. Uh, now, post COVID, my view is really that um, the future is already here. It's and it's ever a new behaviors are going to bring new opportunities for presentation. Uh, we need to be agile, we need to be adaptive, uh, we need to be more humane in terms of our engagement, less opportunistic. Uh, thank you very much. That's my presentation. Um, thank you very much, uh, Agrippa. That was really insightful. I did have a bit of a chuckle when you said fake ups. I'm not sure who you were taking a dig at. 
but uh, I would assume that it wasn't a gentleman, so you will have a bit of an uprising post this uh, webinar. And uh, I could actually relate insofar as uh, the type of personas that uh, this pandemic has brought about. Uh, and yes, home fitness freak, that's me. <laughs> So yes, it is one of those things. Um, at this juncture, we shall uh, take uh, maybe three questions from the floor. I know that we're running a little bit behind time, but um, this is really an interesting topic that I feel a lot of people are going to, uh, you know, uh, take, um, you know, have some good take homes out of. So at this stage, we'll take three questions from the floor. Okay, um, I see some questions here that have come through Farai. Uh, the first question is from Sir Lucywe. She's saying that uh, given the realities on the ground where data costs are high and connectivity is unreliable, how do we craft marketing strategies that embrace digital transformation yet are implementable in this scenario? Okay, I think Agrippa, you can take that one. Um. Uh, thank you, Farai. Uh, the, the, the crux of the question is uh, uh, data costs are, are, are very high. Uh, how do we um, craft strategies that uh, enable us to, you know, to, to deliver to, 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 our, to our customers? Um, yeah, indeed, I, I'll look at it on, on two angles. Uh, one on the, on, on the marketer side or on the business side and uh, two on the on the customer side. Um, I think in my presentation I was, uh, um, uh, you know, consistently uh, comparing uh, two models, if if, if you will, uh, the traditional business model is the one that is uh, again is the one that is digital, that is e-commerce driven, and um, one of the pressures that both businesses and customers are going to be uh, under because of what has happened is there's going to be a, a, a you know a reduction uh, in demand uh, people don't have much disposable income uh, and neither can uh, businesses be optimistic in terms of spending money but uh, for you to be effective in fact I would I would hazard to say uh, bringing your customers into digital, leveraging digital technologies to communicate, to engage, uh, is actually going to lower your costs uh, compared to what you were, depending on the industry that you, you, you have been operating in. Uh, if you have already been digital, perhaps it's slightly different. Uh, if you're talking about developing apps as an example, uh, to develop an app, a mobile app, to be a channel to drive your products and services, I, I would hazard to say that it might actually be worthwhile for you as the marketer to invest in white labeling or zero rating your application so that customers can engage you via your app for free, right? Uh, it may sound very expensive, but in the end, it's actually cheaper because your customer is not paying much, is not paying anything at all, uh, but you are getting more traffic in terms of business uh, than uh, not giving them a channel or not uh, subsidizing them in terms of uh, uh, access to data uh, so that they can communicate with you, make orders for products uh, and service through that uh, channel which you are funding. So there are many ways to look at it, but at the end of the day, migrating the business onto digital, uh, investing instead of that spend which you were putting on billboards, on um, uh, if to some extent radio, uh, to some extent um, uh, uh, you know press, uh, if you can rechannel that investment uh, into digital, uh, you are likely to make a much bigger impact. That business in my right in terms of zero rating or upside to uh, you know to make more program that you can also use to, to 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 open up those channels, make it easy, dead easy for them to communicate and do business. Thanks, so Grippa. Um that was a very concise answer. Like I said, we're gonna take two more questions which I'll read out uh, before we hand over to Jeff. 
um, so that we can uh, you know, keep our conversation going and be mindful of time. Um, so I have two questions which I'll give to you, and if you can give me quite a, 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 a concise response so that we can uh, you know, carry on with the program. The first one from Diana is, how do you communicate your CSR initiatives without appearing opportunistic? And then Gerald uh, Ngonyamo says, uh, this is particularly uh, in, uh, to you, Agrippa, um, you, you say don't do price discount in a crisis, one school of thought says price discounts are also, oh goodness, that's, I seem to have lost it, just a minute. Um, okay, if you can answer the CSR one, and then I will, I will, I will go back to the other question. You sure, you, you, you sure, uh, Farai, you don't want to take the CSR one? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay All right. fine, I can. <laughs> you want me to take that one? <laughs> yeah, in terms of CSR, I think, uh, uh, with specific reference to, to the Zimbabwean setup, uh, I, I think we have seen quite a lot of uh, uh, predatory, if I can put it that way, predatory and opportunistic way of uh, uh, communicating CR, uh, CSR, particularly amongst politicians. Um, somebody takes 10 liters of, of, of sanitizer and they bring a whole crew and uh, and crowd to come and witness, you know, that, uh, uh, that end of it. That's an extreme case. Uh, I think you can uh, do it in a more nuanced manner. You, 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 you can write content, a story around um, CSR, around encouraging fellow corporates, you know, to get involved. And in the process, you are able to communicate what you are doing without really, you know, going on top of the mountain and saying, look at what I've done. I, I don't think that would be the, 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 the best way of doing it. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Agrippa. Um, at this stage, uh, we're going to give the floor to, to Jeff so he can um, take us through his presentation. And then um, for our panelists, there are some questions that are appearing um, live on the chat. So if you're able to respond, that would be great. Some of them I will ask, um, I will ask live, but in the interest of time, um, I will say to Jeff, um, given your experiences in the courier services, which has been affected by the lockdown and the impact on the aviation industry, which has been grounded as a result of the pandemic, save for limited flights of cargo. In brief, what do you say we should do going forward? And once you've shared your thoughts, if you can go um, straight into your presentation um, yeah, for, for, for us all. Thank you, Farai, and uh, thank you to my fellow uh, panelists. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Very, very topical um, uh, uh, discussion. I'm actually enjoying myself and uh, going through. And you've asked a very key, key question, and I was just thinking about it. Um, I sit in a logistics uh, uh, board, and we, we meet every Friday and we discuss uh, what is happening. Uh, like Agrippa State, it's definitely the next normal. That's what we are, we are seeing. We are seeing a mixed bag, uh, Farai, if you will. Um, there are some disruptions of uh, the supply chains, but there are also some uh, very, very significant wins that, uh, that, uh, that we've seen. Um, uh, so for instance, you talked about uh, the, the airlines being grounded, but we've got a new concept that has come up um, uh, during this uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, era. Uh, of uh, ghost, uh, ghost flights, because what happens in, uh, in aviation is in busy airports, you have to maintain your landing and parking slots. So some of these airlines are actually flying empty planes uh, to maintain those uh, parking slots because you have to utilize them for 80%. So there's a concept of use it or lose it. Uh, so we're seeing that happening. But what is happening within the logistics industry, because rather than those planes to fly empty as cost planes actually carrying some pivoting and putting some, uh, uh, some cargo because this has been happened with, uh, in Australia and in the UK with uh, the, the panic buying around toilet paper. Yeah, that had to do with uh, where it was manufactured and the duration that it takes moving from China to Australia, for instance. Yeah and countries lent and they said one of the, the outcomes of, of uh, COVID has actually been, we are seeing a change, a movement 
from China being the source uh, manufacturing base to countries uh, owning certain of uh, that, so they're owning uh, their manufacturing uh, hubs or they're getting them closer to market. That was one of the things that rattled um, uh, countries. I was just looking before this, uh, this call on now, I was on statistica.com, where we've seen, and we can confirm being in the industry, that uh, e-commerce is actually rising. So if you look at the numbers between March and uh, April, it, it rose so for instance in the uk it rose by 22 percent in germany because their lockdown was different was like at 52 percent so those are the statistics that are coming up in america i had a colleague who actually said uh it's christmas every single day so christmas has come earlier in terms of e-commerce because people are under lockdown but they're ordering uh groceries they're ordering uh, fresh fruits and so forth uh, they're ordering personal home hair care products. We've actually seen a drop in lipsticks because women are no longer uh, going to, to the offices. They're working from home, so there's no need to, to use uh, lipstick. So we've seen a decline in that. So we're tracking all these things. So this is what has happened. We've seen a massive uh, disruption of the supply chain. For instance, during the lockdowns, we had to throw away in many countries uh, milk because the cafes and restaurants were closed. So there was no demand for that. That was what we were seeing. So we've actually been um, uh, disrupted, but there are some industries within the logistics uh, sector that have actually benefited from, uh, from this because they are pivoting and they've uh, made uh, an advantage. So I'm, I'm just going to now move into my slides uh, so that we keep our time. I've just got a couple of slides and you'll see that most of them actually are, are linked to what uh, Agrippa talked about um, uh, earlier. We are saying, if you're not digital, you're tossed. That's the thing, yeah? So the basis of my presentation is, and I'm just going to share quickly, um, uh, just a storyline in terms of what is happening, just set the pace, then give you the, the three key uh, changes that we're observing, and a few hints in terms of what we need to do going forward. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to share my screen quickly. Um, I prefer to actually call it the next normal, not the, not the new normal. We are actually in the next normal. This is what has happened. Research has actually shown uh, that the acceleration uh, based on the COVID-19 is three to five years. So we've had to accelerate. We've had to pivot. We've had to be forced by circumstances to actually change our strategies, change our business models, uh, because of uh, what has happened with that thing. So it has forced lots of us to actually change. We're looking at, uh, uh, we're having this uh, thing, Amaz is actually had to pivot. Ordinarily would have been meeting at a hotel somewhere and having this, but now we're doing it online and uh, Agrippa touched on what has happened with, uh, with, uh, with Zoom. Uh, they are actually the best thing. They, December last year, 10 million users per, um, uh, per day, They're over 300 million as, as we speak. The predictions are that there will be around um, um, uh, 600 by uh, end of July. That's where we will be with, uh, with them. So the next normal, we're in a perfect storm, but I can assure you it will come to an end. It will end, and we're now at a new, at a new position. That's, uh, that's what thing. So we were really um, are encouraged that it's going to end. We do not know when. So there's a lot of uncertainty, but what do we do around that? So the elders have always said, change the one constant. And this is actually been proven right within this, this context. So change is the, the one constant. And my presentation, uh, uh, abundance360.com, yeah? Um, that's where I encourage uh, the, the delegates here to, to check it out, abundance, uh, at the 360.com, that's where I think. So one of the statistics that they talk about is that through COVID uh, changes, plus over 70% of our users are actually on social media. We must fish where the fish are. That's where we must be going. If 
as an organization, you are not within those social medias. We are tossed. We must be there. So that is the statistics uh, that we are using. Uh, for I, when you introduced me, you said my background is economics. So we do lots of uh, modeling. I sit in a startup lab program for, for a group. Uh, I represent Africa in that group, and this is one of the slides that we use. We look at global scenarios, then we cascade them to country scenarios, yeah? So I'm just, because of time, I'll just share the global scenarios. And this is uh, from uh, Clem Sunta and Chantel Ibra. They are from uh, South Africa. This is what they've actually used. These are the, um, the four quadrants that, uh, that we, we have in terms of the economy. Um, so we've got two pulling uh, factors. Uh, on the forked lightning, we've got uh, post potential and economic uh, collapse or strain and leading to a global recession. This is where we were heading to. And the, the, the period is uh, 18 months because um, that's where the simulations from the economics, they believe we may um, have a turn around. And more importantly, that we may have a vaccine, uh, a COVID uh, a vaccine. So this is what they're looking uh, at. That's why we came up with uh, this, uh, this scenario. But the other one that uh, 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 Agrippa talked about is uh, the quadrant of uh, the one world, where new balls, please, where we're seeing a rapid uptake of new technology. The fourth industrial revolution, ladies and gentlemen, has been accelerated threefold. It has come ahead of schedule. We were busy uh, taking our, uh, our time, but now this has accelerated it, that if you do not do that, you are in trouble, yeah? Then the bottom uh, quadrant there is just showing you the predictions in terms of how the economies are going to think. Are, are we going to have a U-shape in terms of the recovery from a recession? Are we going to have a W? Are we going to have a V-shape? Yeah, this is what it's, uh, it's all showing about. But this slide is so key in terms of what we're going to look at. So when you're doing your business modeling planning, Remember to have these scenarios, yeah? So you do a global one, you do an African one, you do your country, so we do uh, Zimbabwe, yeah? So that you see some similar similarities and uh, differences, yeah? Um, Agrippa and you, uh, Farah, you touched about this. It's all about the brand essence. What is the company purpose and that emotional connection? This is where it's important. We need to have that emotional uh, connection because uh, consumer behaviors are changing. And now we will be measured by that. Let us not be opportunistic. And I won't go through this because you, you will get the slides, but these are the uh, seven key issues that you need to uh, look around, yeah? But at the core, it's that, uh, the essence of uh, the brand, company purpose, and emotional uh, connection. So I want to look at three, three trends, three mega trends that are happening. And these are the ones that I'm going to share with. So in the new normal or the next normal, the first one is increased online shopping. This is what is uh, what is happening because we're in the era of lockdowns, and as you as you know, um, um, uh, the president increased our our uh, lockdown indefinitely, and this is what's going to happen. We will see countries pivoting in and pivoting out of a lockdown as we go on until um, a vaccine is is found. And what a pleasure to shop uh, online. So once you shop online, you do not want to go back. I, I did my shopping this, uh, this morning with uh, shop, ShopRite uh, checkers. They've actually done something fundamentally different using uh, in, uh, an app called uh, 6060. Yeah, you just uh, shop and within 60 minutes, they deliver the, the goods, yeah, uh, using uh, vehicles and uh, motorcycle. But today, uh, it was quite interesting that the delivery came from Net Floris, yeah? They are a, a floral company, but because of the lockdowns, not many people are buying flowers, but they pivoted to a home delivery. So they've been linked up and they are the ones that brought uh, uh, the goods that are actually purchased today. So we're seeing this, uh, this happening, these organizations in the West, they're actually seeing a, a massive, massive upshot of uh, online shopping where people are staying at home and just uh, shopping online and having a very interesting uh, digital uh, experience. We're seeing uh, the advent of virtual shops. So you go to a virtual mall and you go to a mall of Africa or to Sam Levy and you move from one shop to the other, but virtually and buy your things, then you get them delivered. 
because this is what is uh, this is what is happening. So that's the first uh, 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 trend that we're seeing: the increase the online shopping. But what are the implications, the strategic implications for this onto marketers? Because that is what is key. So a couple of points in terms of that. The first one is we're seeing a shift uh, from brick and mortar, and uh, uh, Agrippa talked about Primark in. Um, in the UK, in South Africa, we talk about Edcon, the owners of Edgas, they're actually on the ropes, they're about to, to close because it's not happening. Their online experience, they started late, they were laggard and it didn't work, uh, work well. So we're seeing a gradual shift from uh, brick and mortar to online shopping, meaning that our marketing strategies must be e-commerce ready. They must be e-commerce ready. The second uh, implication for marketers in terms of online thing, what does e-commerce readiness look like? That's the question that we need to, to ask. And that is the question that as marketers, we must certainly um, uh, tackle. The online uh, channels are no longer just awareness as there was the case a few years ago, just said this so that people can uh, think, but now you are mining lots of information and things are happening. There's a call for action now uh, there. So that's one of the things that you need to know. It must be engaging to, uh, uh, to customer must give a great experience. Online marketing strategy must cover the full sales and marketing cycle uh, from awareness creation, engagement, and the conversion. It's, it's that important, yeah? So we must uh, pivot around that. Successful sales conversion will only be achieved if the following elements are actually built on that online uh, platform. The pricing must be right, the payment integration, and the shipping integration. The last Point the shipping integration is very, very important for any physical products, yeah? So if I order in the comfort of my home using my smartphone, I do not want to be told that I need to talk to somebody to do the delivery. I want a seamless uh, service. So this is what you need to know. It must include pricing. It must have payment integration with, uh, with safety features and a, shipment, uh, a shipping integration. We must ensure also uh, as marketers um, that all social media and online communications uh, contain the below two elements to achieve our conventions, yeah? So we must create uh, the awareness and also uh, contain some strong call for action, yeah? Click here and buy and save 15%. Uh, click here and you win uh, this. Uh, click here and there's a free ebook because one of the things that is coming out now for I, you see it's the advent of uh, blogs. Blogs have become quite key because people are working from home, people are online, so they're reading. So it doesn't matter if you have a blog and then it's call for action. So this is uh, that. So these are the strategic implications for marketers on the first trend. So I'll move on to the second trend now. And, it's, and I saw a question linked to, uh, in terms of the increase in uh, remote work and flexi times. This is uh, again the new, the new normal. This is what is happening uh, right now. I'm actually uh, it, uh, working uh, from home. I work from home uh, three times a, a week, and then twice a week uh, I go to the office because that's what uh, that's what has happened. Because we have a roster to uh, to maintain uh, social distancing protocols. Yeah. So, what are the implications here? On Friday, Jack Dorsey, uh, the CEO of uh, Twitter Incorporated said COVID has actually made it mandatory for them. So all his employees will now be permanently based from home. That's the new ruling that she has made. And more companies are going to do like what Jack Dorsey has done at Twitter, that we will start seeing more people working at home. But it comes with challenges. Um, how do you manage the change management around that? How do you manage uh, data costs? How do you manage uh, incentives and so forth? And it's a topic for another discussion that uh, that we should have in terms of protocols around uh, remote work and uh, flexible thing. We are seeing more companies starting to work from home, and it's going to happen. So, as corporates, we must be thinking proactively and say, how do we make sure that our people are connected so that they can still reach uh, to our customers? Yeah. So, what are the strategic implications for marketers? Uh, in terms of uh, remote work and flexi times. Your prime times for ad targeting will shift, yeah? If 
you were targeting uh, drive time, drive time no longer happening. If we uh, parents doing uh, school runs uh, lunchtime, they are going to pick up kids, kids are doing online learning, so it's not going to happen. So you need to shift also, you must move with the times, yeah? Previously, commute times, uh, lunch times, and evening times were prime times for adverts, but this has changed. So now, remember the statistics that I started with that over 70% of uh, users are now on social uh, platforms, yeah? So this means as marketers, we need to, to adapt and uh, pivot, yeah? Increase in remote work and flexi time will change prime uh, ad times and possibly increase uh, ad windows when the market is captive, yeah? The third one, the third uh, trend there, uh, Farai, is uh, linked to supply chain restructuring, yeah? I gave the example of uh, the toilet paper that was affecting ICs and people started panic buying and so forth and say never under our watch should it happen. We should make sure that we're closer to market and this is exactly what is happening. So there are three fundamentals that I need to talk about here. The first one is shown that uh, COVID-19 has shown us that global supply chains can be impacted at a moment's notice, yeah? And this is, this is a worry. The second point there is that the reliance on global supply chains is expected to decline, we'll be moving towards uh, uh, closer to market, yeah? There are new markets, uh, new manufacturing bases that are uh, um, uh, emerging and I'll share uh, those uh, with you. For instance, in the US, they are considering uh, reliance on China on uh, key microchip uh, suppliers. It's caused uh, problems, yeah? Uh, we are seeing um, the issue of ventilators where it's open airlines, instead of crying out that they've been grounded and nothing is happened, they've done a joint venture with a Chinese company. So from July, it's open airlines will be manufacturing uh, ventilators. So I can assure you that uh, in Zimbabwe in future, we'll be buying some ventilators coming out of Ethiopia. And it's all in the one chain, the value chain, because they will use their planes to deliver them to, to us in, uh, in, uh, in Zimbabwe. So, because of what has happened with China and some reputational risk around this virus, new manufacturing bases are, are happening. And watch out for these ones. India and Vietnam, we're seeing massive, massive uh, uh, shipments coming out of these uh, India and Vietnam. And in Africa, Ethiopia and, uh, and uh, Ghana. So these are some of the countries that you need to watch, watch in terms of the supply chain. So in terms of this, what are the strategic um, implications for marketers uh, for the supply chain restructuring? You need to position your brands as best uh, local buys. So there's an opportunity for even our small SMEs to make sure that they are in, in for it now. There's an opportunity to start making lots of things uh, um, uh, home. The issue of uh, masks, we should be doing that. So we should position our brands as best local buys, yeah? We must integrate some homegrown uh, messaging into our local uh, marketing and communications. We must execute strong homegrown messaging across our key social media and online channels, that is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. All right, so what has, what has uh, COVID-19 done? This is uh, just some um, summarizing. Uh, we need to do what I call marketing reset. We must uh, reset. This is the opportunity that has been given to us. So there are five key focus areas that I just want to talk about quickly. The first one, we must make sure that we create databases, yeah? Have an email database, yeah? It remains one of the best. I was looking at some statistics today in terms of the response on, uh, on emails in the US, it used to be around between two and 5%. It has shot up now between 17 and a half and 22%. In terms of the response, we must create a database that we can actually use a digital platform. Over 90% of our emails that are sent are delivered, that is statistic. The second uh, reset in terms of marketing, content is key. There's a new requirement. We need great copywriters. We need to be doing blogs. We need to be doing blogs. So we need to, if you are great at storytelling and a copywriter and you've got some great, uh, uh, if you've got budget, you 
you can go to some uh, uh, agencies that can actually assist you, but you can also do it uh, in general. We need, uh, there's need for great videos and engaging content, some short, uh, uh, sharp videos, three to five minutes max, and then the long-term content planning and annual themes. So have themes for the whole year. We're we are moving into winter, what's happening? We're moving into summer, we're moving to year end, we're moving to, to Easter. Have themes that are linked to your content. The third, uh, in terms of uh, market um, uh, marketing research, is digital uh, platforms to use. I encourage you to use more than one. Don't use one, have more than one. It's important to follow a multi-social media approach. Not all platforms are equal. You need to uh, test uh, where your customers are. In fact, there is a book uh, by Subri Sabri, and he's talking about that all of the corporates actually focusing on the 3%. The 97% is actually stuck there and they've got nothing. We must shift and move to the 97% and stop focusing all of our eggs on, on just the 3%. Campaign focus, that's the, that's the fourth one. Is our campaign in line with the core business? Is it in line with our values? What are the themes? What are the key fundamentals? Are we targeting the right market? Every action must be geared towards moving the needle, must be moving uh, the needle. Then finally, data is everything. We're moving into digital uh, transformation and digitization. So it's all about analytics and insights. So if you're using Facebook uh, uh, for business, um, YouTube, you can get some lovely, lovely information uh, in terms of click uh, through rates, the conversion rates, uh, the sources of that, so that you can actually use that information to do, to do the, the best. So there's analytics and insights. So we must be knowing we're sitting on so much data that we're not fully utilizing and we must be utilizing that data. So um, uh, Farai, with that, that's my intervention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeff. That was indeed really interesting. Some great insights. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with our panelists today because you're all taking digs at women. Now, you know, Jeff is talking about dropping lipstick use. Guys, come on. <laughs> anyway, we're going to move very fast from that. And just to maybe reiterate and say that, um, each country is going to be for self, as what Jeff said. So what that means is that this presents opportunities for us as marketers. How are we going to become self-reliant? How are we going to have products that um, cater to our own needs? It's an opportunity for us to reimagine, like I mentioned at the beginning um, in my intro remarks. So as we're reimagining, what are the opportunities? You gave an example of florists now becoming logistics companies and the ghost planes that are now doing cargo deliveries. So yeah, there are a lot of opportunities for us. We just need to put our heads around it and think through what it is uh, that we need to do. And um, to use your expression, marketing reset, uh, this next normal um, actually uh, pre pre uh, presents an opportunity for us to look at what it is that we have at hand and um, to really look at our value proposition. What are we giving to the customer? Um, has COVID-19 presented itself as a lens on our product? These are some of the things that we need to ask ourselves. And also, we have to shift our value proposition accordingly. So at the end of the day, we want to be able to answer the question um, after 12 months that um, what, will, what will we place at the head of all our marketing efforts? Uh, positioning and reputation, perhaps? Uh, product and capabilities, again, that will become key and culture and working practice, this next normal has brought about a change in the way we think, the way we do business, the way we attend church, the way we exercise. So very challenging, but um, like any uh, change that comes in the world, even if we use biblical reference, uh, the Israelites uh, cried the sea. No one had walked across an ocean before. It was parted, and they walked on. Before uh, David slew Goliath, no one had ever killed a giant with a slingshot. So all these major events throughout history, even if you look at how um, the apostles then brought uh, Christianity to the world, 
always uh, some sort of catastrophic, whether it's a, a pandemic or some major event takes us to the next normal. So marketers, I give it to you. These are the things that we need to think about. And um, now I'm going to open the floor up to a few questions. And um, at this stage, we may, um, I, I, I may be able to have our panelists respond live to maybe three or four, but please feel free to type in your questions and they will respond to them. Uh, so yeah, with that, um, I open the floor up to, to, to questions. I see that, um, okay, we've got some questions from uh, the previous session. Uh, maybe we can uh, give this to you, our economist, Jeff. Some, uh, an anonymous attendee says, regarding discounts, um, what if it's unavoidable? How does that affect our businesses? So Jeff, uh, if you can answer that one. Mm -hmm. Great question, um, um, Akora. So mm -hmm. again, let's start from the premise where Agrippa was uh, talking about it. So it's all about that, that balance. We must think long term so the relationship the emotional connection between the, the consumer whose behavior is changing by the way mm -hmm. and our corporate we must uh, consider that so think of the lifetime value of that relationship with the with the consumer do not be short termism yeah think uh, think long term before you make those decisions of uh, the, because you'll be swept you'll be swept apart yeah the market now it's no longer Zimbabwe the market is the entire globe, it's the entire globe. So pricing, you have to be very, very, very careful about it. Um, thank you, Jeff. Um, I see we have uh, one other question that has come through. Um, I, uh, Esther Masunda wanted to ask a question. Esther, can you please go ahead? I'm not sure if Esther can hear me, but uh, while Esther is uh, is connecting with us, uh, Selusiwe says, given the realities on the ground where data costs are high and connectivity is unreliable, how do we craft marketing strategies that embrace digital transformation yet implement, uh, implementable in this scenario? Uh, Agrippa, do you want to take that one? Can you unmute your microphone? Sorry, uh, Farai, I was saying I didn't quite get the, the question. Can you rephrase that again? Okay, all, all right, uh, let me do that. Uh, it says, given the realities on the ground where data costs are high and connectivity is unreliable, how do we come up with marketing strategies that embrace digital transformation and uh, are in, implementable in this scenario? Okay, um, agreed. Uh, data access is, is, is a limitation, uh, both in terms of uh, uh, some areas not uh, having um, uh, data, and in some cases, people not having uh, enough enough money to access data. Uh, I think in my one of my earlier responses, I, I spoke about uh, um, zero rating uh, applications as a business. Um, uh, uh, you are reallocating your marketing spend uh, from some of the traditional media that you have been using up until now. You deploy that to, um, uh, to your apps, which you are developing, which enable customers to, um, uh, what do you call it, to, to, to communicate with you, to order product, uh, and so forth. You can do that on USSD. Uh, you can also look at, um, uh, you know, um, uh, WhatsApp uh, as some of the channels that you can you can actually use for these customers to communicate with you cheaply uh, and um, uh, uh, lower the cost of, of access. Because uh, the next best option, if you look at um, the situation that we were uh, under in lockdown. Uh, in the extreme of cases, people could not move. 
which is um, uh, only perhaps um, uh, some of the, what we saw some of the SMEs doing was uh, creating these user groups. Yes, there's an argument. Some people may say SMS, USSD is, is not exactly digital, but uh, in our African Zimbabwean setting, given the limitations that you have just said, uh, it would be creative and innovative for somebody to embrace those channels uh, a business uh, redirects their uh, marketing investment towards uh, making access free for the customer. And once they get to a certain stage, I, I tell you customers are quite keen uh, to be paying for something because they realize it's a lot more convenient. Uh, they are lowering their costs. They can use their time for doing something that is more meaningful than going out to order a product or buy a product or a service. Okay, great. Thank you, Agrippa. Um, we have overshot our time by 48 minutes. Um, uh, I appreciate that this uh, discussion has been very valuable to our participants and indeed to us panelists as well. So I'm going to ask one question which has come up and uh, we'll put that in our last question. Uh, in attendees, you can still type in your questions and we will we'll respond to them. Uh, just not live, but um, you know, through through, through the uh, question and answer platform. So our last question, and I will ask this to Jeff: What are the implications to marketers, and what skills should marketers possess going forward? So I think we need to be specific. Besides, they must be digital savvy or tech savvy. What skills should they possess? Thank you, Farang. So to answer that, um, I'll look at uh, two things. Yeah. As we are now progressing uh, on this new trajectory for the next normal, there are some marketing 1.0 stuff that we still need to, to work on. Yeah. So while we're going towards the next normal, but behind, we've got some credits that we did not uh, do. So we must do housekeeping. Yeah. Do we have websites? So we should be going back to basics on the one side. That's what we need to do, yeah? Before we just jump ahead about uh, digital, being digital savvy and so forth, yeah? So that's the first thing. Secondly, we must collaborate more. There must be lots of collaboration. It was the question that uh, Agrippa has just answered now. Uh, collaboration uh, between corporates, uh, um, with universities in terms of how do we optimize on our data costs because this is our reality. This is what is going to do so, uh, to, to happen. So the MNC, M, 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 MNOs that are MNOs, doing this, yes. yeah, it will come very, it will come very handy because education is online, shopping is online. So we need to uh, maximize that. So there should be collaboration uh, between uh, corporates. We must read, 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 read and apply. There's lots of tools uh, online that we must apply. So we must apply our common sense. So read, read, read. Lots of uh, uh, um, uh, resources that are online that we read and apply. The key is to apply. We must execute. Don't just read for the sake of reading, but read and apply and say, this, I want to trial it and see what it will take. So we want to do that. Then last point that I want to talk about is that it's high time that the market has set on the table. It's high time that the market has set on the table. So we must be influential at board levels. We want to get uh, the, um, uh, in terms of the whole company, so the top executive, the board members, they should come and join uh, Mars. We run a digital marketing course. That's, that's the new normal, we, that's the reality. So we need to, for them to have these skills so that they answer uh, what is happening or else they'll be left behind. So we want everyone. And there's an opportunity using this platform we've seen so we want uh, people to join uh, on uh, on uh, uh, the association of Zimbabwe we're doing uh, the digital marketing course yeah great uh, thank you Jeff uh, for your response uh, we have come to the end of our webinar so I'm going to give my closing remarks as in the takeaways that uh, we feel that um, everyone should have as we go forward and I mentioned these right at the beginning which was uh, we need to resolve the immediate challenges. What are we facing? We need to have resilience and, and, and cash, you know, and near-term cash management is so critical. Uh, a group I made reference to the fact that, you know, there'll be a squeeze on, 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 on cash. 
businesses. So we need to think around that. And uh, virtual commerce, please note, because I know Jeff said the next normal. So a detailed imagination of how we are going to take our business forward. We cannot re-emphasize that enough. And lastly, there's going to be a lot of regulation. There's a lot of e-commerce. There's a lot of things happening online. Uh, so we really need to ensure that we're very clear about the, the, the reforms and the regulation and uh, regulations in our various industries. And maybe just to go back to reimagination, a friend of mine said, um, her name is Michelle, she said to me, you know what, what skill is your team going to come up with this um, out of all this? Because uh, online and digital communication is going to be so important, are you going to be paying for each and every single social media square uh, you know, uh, for your, from your ad agency? Can your team re-skill themselves? And I put that across to my team. And Wesley's been amazing. Uh, he's been on Canva. He comes up with all sorts of things. Yes, we need to refine the process. But the bottom line is there's certain things that we can do ourselves. So on that uh, note around uh, you know practicing what we preach, uh, I will hand over to uh, Julian Rusike, who's the Secretary General for MAZ, Marketers Association of Zimbabwe, to give us his closing remarks. Uh, participants, thank you for joining us, and we hope that you've learned something from this webinar. Gillian, over to you. Gillian, are you there? Uh, if Gillian is not available, can Enya give us the closing remarks? All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Farai, I want to just thank all the participants for coming through to this uh, webinar. We have learned a lot. I noticed that there's quite a lot of questions from the interactions as well as the discussions. We look forward uh, to further webinars where we can even digest this further. Uh, Mr. Rusike sends his regards and has been actively participating as well in this, uh, in this webinar. I want to thank and appreciate our panelists, uh, Mr. Mbagwa, we, we enjoyed the, the, the discussions, we enjoyed the illustrations. Indeed, we are challenged. I also want to appreciate uh, Mr. Piri. Your, your, your presentation was quite challenging. Your presentation was insightful. And I, I think uh, all our participants managed to glean uh, a lot of issues there. And to our moderator, Farai, you really uh, point and we learned quite a lot. I noticed that there are quite a number of questions that are still coming through. Uh, however, for the sake of our time, we have to bring this to an end. I've given you our details for MAZ there. We are on 21 Lizard Road. I've also shared uh, our Twitter handles as well as our Facebook pages. Please make sure that we discuss and we interact further. So I think uh, this, this is the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Enya. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you, Anya. Thank you, team. And uh, let's not forget to respond to the questions online. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. I'm not going to do that. 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 I